Good morning, everyone. Morning, good morning. We're in uh, <clears throat> Midos, Perek Dalit, Mishnah Bays. We're learning about the construction of the Heicho. And we're going to take our quick tour, as we always do, to understand where we are. But today, we're going back to Diagram 1. This is the eastern the eastern gate, the Shushan Habira gate into the Harabayas. You would have come down Har Hazesim. You're walking over this bridge that we learned about. It was built for the Paraduma when they brought the Paraduma into the, <coughs> from the base Hamikdash to Har Hazesim. <coughs> we always talk about the Shushan Habira gate because that's the simplest way to talk about these Mishnayas. However, we know that there were other gates through which you were able to enter the Har Habayas. For example, the southern side has two <clears throat> openings, uh, those are Shari Chuldas. So again, we've entered uh, the Har Habayis <clears throat> through Shushan Habira. <clears throat> the entire open area is Har Habayis, and that has its own halachas. We walked into the lower gate, which is the Soreg, Le'ili Nishmas Rav David Zeller, is the Shama should have an Aliyah. The Soreg was that low gate, that a line of demarcation where a guy couldn't go, and then you walked into the Chel. From the Chel, you took 12 steps up into the Ezra Snashim. Ezra Snashim, you took 15 steps up into Shar Nikonar. Behind this Shar was the Mizbeach and the Mesab Mitbachayim. And then you had this building. This structure is what we've been looking at. The front part of the structure is the rectangular building known as Ulam. And behind the rectangular building, this is where we are now, is the Heicho. And in this building behind the Ulam, the first part of the building has the Shulchan for the Lechem upon him, the Menorah, and the small Mizbeach to bring Ketores. The back part of this building has the Aron, the Kodesh Kadoshim. This is the structure that we're up to right now. We've done the front part, rectangular area, Ulam. We're now learning about the structure of the Heichel. If we go to diagram three, right, we've gone through the Harabayas, through the Soreg, through the Chel, Ezos Noshim, 15 steps, Shar Nikonor, Ezos Yisrael, Ezos Kohanim, if you're a person that's allowed to be there, the Mizbeach, between the Mizbeach and the Ulam, 12 steps up into the Ulam, rectangular building, and this is where we are now. We are focused on this building, which is called Heichel. We learned about the doors of the Heichel. There, was a, there are four doors here, two on the outer part of the entryway, and two on the inner part of the entryway for four, or we learned the second opinion that there were actually eight doors, because each door was actually two, it was a folding spiral kind of door. <clears throat> we then learned yesterday in the Mishnah, using diagram 34B, the door into the Heichel, we've gone through the Ulam, the floor in front of the, the door, the floor in front of the door is Ulam floor. And now you walk through, you walked on this floor and you came up to this door. This is the Shar Hagodo, the large gate. And to the right side of that door, the north side, there was a little door, a pishpesh, and to the left side, there was another pishpesh, a little door, south. This door we learned about yesterday, it remained closed. We learned about it in the Pasuk in Yecheskel, it remained closed, was never to be open. We learned two exceptions to that. One, it was open for the Kohen Gadol or Mashiach, Bemheir Yameinu, that the Kohen God or Mashiach would go into this private room 
and would be able to eat there so that he would not have to eat with others or the Derech <coughs> Kavo. We also learned from Yecheskel that this southern door was open on Shabbos and Rosh Chodesh. So when the Klal Yisrael were, bend, were bowing in the base Hamikdash, this door was open and whether they were able to see it or not is a question of mathematics, but the door was open. So when the Jews bowed in the base Hamikdash, they were bowing to the wide open Hechel. It is this northern little door that's the focus of what we're going to learn about today. <clears throat> in order to bring Karbonus or to do Avod in the base Hamikdash, this large door has to be open. In other words, we go back to diagram three. We go back to, di to diagram three. The Mizbeach is right here in the Azara. Again, we don't, we're not looking at Ezra's notion. This is the Azara. This is the Azara. And in the Azara, there's open space. And in the Azara, there's a structure. There's a building, Ulam and Hechel. We are focusing here on this area, Hechel. Right here, this doorway to the Hechel, those doors had to be open. The four or the eight doors had to be open before you can do any avoda. So if they wanted to bring the carb in early morning, this, this, this entire area had to be wide open. Now we already learned that at the Ulam, there was a huge opening, 40 high, 20 wide, no door, just curtain. The Hechel, had the usual size door, 20 high, 10 wide, but it had doors. These, this curtain of the ulam is open, these doors must be open, and then you can do the avoda. How did they open this large door? And that's the question that we're gonna deal with today in the Mishnah. This large door of the Hechel, how did they get this open? They did not directly open this door. And that's what we're going to learn about now. Let's take a look in the Mishnah. <clears throat> we're on page 58 of our Mishnah, Yismidos. Notel es hamafteach, the Kohen who was in charge <clears throat> of that day of doing the early avoda of Trumas Hadeshen, every day in the Beis Hamikdash, <clears throat> there was a Kohen and this is uh, discussed in Masech the Yuma, there were lotteries early morning, very early, really night. There were lotteries done in the Lishkas Hagazis, a special room in the Beis Hamikdash, which we will learn about, Bezvat Hashem. Lotteries were done so that Kohanim would know who's going to do what that day. Going back a step, <clears throat> Kohanim were broken into 24 Mishmaros, every week a different mishmar came. So one mishmar, and they had, there were names to these mishmaros. Some of them are mentioned in the Kinos and Tishabov. The mishmar came and it started its avoda on Shabbos, <clears throat> Shabbos afternoon at the Lechem Aponim. There was a switch of the guard, so to speak. And the mishmar Hanichnas would work for a week. the next Mishmar would come and take over the following week. The first Mishmar would wait 24 weeks till it came back and had the privilege of doing the work in the Beis HaMikdash. Each Mishmar was broken into six, according to some seven, Bate Avot, particular families. So you have a Mishmar that comes every 24 weeks and in its week, it's broken into six or seven days. So these Kohanim work on the first day, Sunday, these Kohanim work on the second day, Monday, these Kohanim work on the third day, Tuesday, etc. If there was a lot of work going on in the base Hamikdash, they would have to bring others. So the Tuesday people would have to ask other Kohanim of that week's Mishmar to help along. <clears throat> so in the base Av itself, let's say you're a member of the Monday base Av for this week. 
So who gets to do what in the base Hamikdash on that day? And that was decided by a lottery system that occurred in the Lishkas HaGazah. So there was a person who was Zoha in the Chumas Hadeshen. Chumas Hadeshen means that a Kohen took a little shovel, <clears throat> went up to the top of the Mizbeach. In the middle of the Mizbeach, we learned that there was ash at Tapuach. It looked like an apple. It was uh, ash that had a bit cleaned from around the burning fires of Mizbeach. The ash became a heap in the middle of Mizbeach, and every so often that heap would be clean. But every day, a little uh, of that ash from the mill of the Mizbeach was removed from the Mizbeach and put on the side of the Mizbeach, and a miracle happened was Nifla Bakarka Karka HaAzorah. It got absorbed into the floor. That was a mitzvah, mitzvah, Chumas Hadeshen, <clears throat> the Mosik in Pashas Tzav, that the Vehemim is Hadeshen, I believe it's in Pashas Tzav, Vehemim is Hadeshen, Tosho Asher Tochal Ha'esh, Besamo Eitzel HaMezbeach. So this person, this Kohen, uh, generally was assigned to start the whole of Oda, and he would have to open this door. He would have to open this shar hagodol, but he didn't open it directly. He went into the the pishbeish tzafon. Remember, the pishbeish daron was for all intent and purposes locked, except for the exceptions we mentioned. So he would go into this little door. Now, what did he do? So the Mishnah says, not the lesamafer. He took the key. Uposak es hapishbeish. He opened the northern little door. And he went into the corridor. We're going to take a look at the picture in a moment. We looked at the corridors yesterday. And from the corridor, he went into the Hegel. This is picture 34C. In front, at the bottom of the picture, they're showing you Ulam. That was the rectangular building that was in front of the Hegel. You walked into the Ulam, and now you came to the door of the Hegel. But you couldn't open this door directly. You went into a ta. You went into a corridor. We're gonna to get to the corridors. We, we explained them briefly yesterday, and we'll get a bit to the corridors today. Uh, we'll see how much we can get to today. I'd like to <clears throat> Mietz Hashem stay on schedule so that we can make a Siyam and Mietz Hashem next week on Masech Tamidas and we'll have, uh, we'll plan to make uh, a nice Siyam for Masech Tamidas. So there's a lot, a lot of shitas, a lot of opinions about how the Ta or the Ta'im, how these corridors work. When we get to them, I'll explain briefly the two major shitas. But at any rate, the first opinion of the Mishnah says, put it this way, the first of the opinion of the Mishnah says, the Kohen opened the little door on the north. He walked through the door, and he's in the corridor. Now, these corridors have openings in them. He walked into the corridor, made a turn, walked through what we call the wall of the Kosel, the Kosel of the Hegel, not the Kosel Marobi, the Kosel of the Hegel. He walked through the door, and now he's in the Hegel. He then walked towards the inner door of the Hegel. He opened the inner door of the Hegel, which was locked from the inside, and now he entered this little chamber here. And then he opened the outer doors of the Hegel towards the inside. These doors are being opened to the inside. The first two doors open to the inside of the chamber, and the second two doors open to the inside of the Hegel. So according to the first opinion of the Mishnah, the Kohen in the morning opens the northern little door walks into the corridor behind the little door, makes a turn where there's an opening to literally walk through the walls. The walls are open. And he goes from this corridor through the next corridor, makes a turn. He's now in the Hegel. He 
opens the inner door of the Heichal, which opens to the inside. He then can go into this little chamber. He opens the two outer doors of the Heichal into the Heichal. Remember, we learned about this, whether there was gold behind the doors or not. And now the big door is open. He went into the corridor, into the Heichal, opened the large doors, and now you're ready for a voda. That is the first shita of the Mishnah, the first opinion of the Mishnah. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, the Mishnah says on page 58, Rabbi Yehuda has a different opinion. He walked in to the thickness of the wall. The wall has its corridor. Until he found himself between the two gates, <clears throat> he opened the inner doors, the outer doors in, and the outer and the inner doors from the outside. If you take a look at picture diagram 34D, <clears throat> you can now see Rev Yehuda. Let's go look at that first opinion again. The first opinion says that the Kohen entered the northern little door walked right up the corridor and walked right into the Heichel. Now that he's in the Heichel, he has the inner door that has to be open and then the outer door that has to be open. Rabbi Yehuda says he did not go into the Heichel right away. He opened the northern little door, walked into the corridor, made the turn into the next corridor but didn't go all the way into the Hegel. He walked down in that corridor. Just follow the arrows according to Rabbi Yehuda. He didn't go up through the northern door into the corridor and then into the Hegel itself, which is what the Tanakhama, the first opinion says. He walked through the northern little door, made a turn, went into the next corridor and went east, and then made a turn, and now where is he? Went up through the northern door, through the corridor, and then down into the corridor itself, and then he turned. Where does he find himself now? Between the two doors, but the, outside the two doors. He then enters the two doors. So, so far, this Kohen who is going to open these doors has not been in the Hegel. According to the first opinion, you open the northern door, you go right up into the corridor, make a turn directly into Hegel, and start opening the doors. Rabbi Yehuda says you go in the northern door, make a turn, go right down eastward into the next corridor, make a turn, and now you're at the door. You walk in here to this chamber, and Rabbi Yehuda says, The first thing he does is he opens the outer doors inward, and the outer doors he opens from the outside. What does that mean? It means the Kohen is in this little chamber. He's going to open the outer doors by looking east. He's going to stand in here. This is east. This is west. The Kodesh Kadoshim is here. This is east. So the Kohen, according to Rabbi Yehuda, is going to go into here, look east, and he's going to open these outer doors to the inside. And now he's going to turn his body around and look west. And he's going to open the outer door, the inner doors, these two doors, mipachutz from outside. He's still outside the Hegel. So basically the difference of opinion is the time that the first opinion of the Mishnah says that the Kohen walked in the corridor, walked through the corridors, went right into the Hegel and opened doors. Rabbi Yudha says you don't go into the Hegel. You go into the northern door into the next corridor, you come to the doors, 
you open the set of doors and now the Hegel is open without you going, the Kohe needing to go into the Hegel. That's Mishnah Beis. <clears throat> I'm going to give you an introduction for tomorrow. We did this a bit. Give you an introduction to the next Mishnah so that we can have an easier time tomorrow. I didn't listen to what I said yesterday. I, I usually don't listen to the shiurim after I give the shiurim. Um, I don't have the time to do that. I don't recall exactly what I said yesterday about the ta'im, <clears throat> but there are two major opinions about these corridors and how they were built. We're gonna go through it now as an introduction quickly. It'll facilitate us learning tomorrow. Let's take a look at the diagram we looked at yesterday. This diagram, number 31, is what we would call the Rambam, Maimonides' understanding of the Ta'im, the corridors. It's gonna be different than Rashi. For us right now, we're talking about corridors. There are two ways to think about Ta'im, corridors, that have room, that have long corridors that the Kohanim can do things inside. Ta'im can also mean little compartments. This is the Rambam. The Rambam holds that Ta'im are corridors. So you went through the Ulam, and now we want to learn about the Heichal. The Heichal had five corridors five corridors on, on the north and five corridors on the south. A corridor means each one of these lines. So the south had five, I'm sorry, the north here that I'm pointing to has five and the south has five. Three of them, as we explained yesterday, actually go around the whole Hecho. The first one, is called the wall of the Hegel. It goes, if you follow me, it goes all around the Hegel. It's a completely open corridor according to the Rambam and goes around all three sides, north, south, west, and a little piece on the east, left and east, right. And in the middle is the door to the Hegel. That is corridor one, that is called Kosel Hegel, the wall of the Hegel. And instead of the wall of the Hegel being a solid block wall, the wall of the Hegel is actually two thin walls and an open corridor, open space in the middle. So it's not a block wall. It's a wall that's an ama thick, another wall an ama thick, and between the two walls, there's six, I'm sorry, between the two walls, there's four amos of walking space. So the Rambam calls this a ta, or a te. It's a corridor, it goes all around. The next corridor is called te, or ta. It has no name, it's just called ta, corridor. The first one is called kosel hegel, it is the wall that surrounds the hegel. The second one is called ta, it is the corridor. And this corridor also goes around north, west, and south. It's connected. It doesn't come around the east. Only the first corridor, the Kosel Hegel, comes a bit to the east. Then we go to the third corridor. The third corridor is called Kosel Ta. It is the wall of the Ta. Number two is called Ta. Number three is called the wall of Ta. Number three is five amos. The wall, each wall is one amo thick, and the opening is three amos. And number three, as you can see, also goes all around, north, south, west. Those are three corridors. So far we've done three on the north, three on the south. Those three of the north and the south go all around the Hegel. Then we come to the last two. There are two on the northern wall 
One is called the Masiba, which we'll learn about, and one is called the Kosel Masiba, the wall of the Masiba. As you can see, these two corridors go from east to west, and they come to a dead end. They're closed. They do not go around. The same thing is true. I'm sorry, the, the west has the, uh, the north has the Masiba and the Kosal Masiba that come to dead ends. On the southern side, you have two that also come to a dead end. One is called Beis Horodas Hamayim. We'll learn about that. And one is called the Kosel, the wall. Again, these two on the south come to a dead end at the west. So we have a parallel system here. The first three corridors go all around. The last two on both sides come to dead ends. They do not go all around. This is the Rambam's understanding and diagram of what he calls ta'im. They are corridors. These corridors, if we take a look at picture 34A, this is continuing the Rambam's understanding of the Mishnah. These are the steps to the Ulam, 12 steps. To the right of the steps and to the left of the steps is open area, which means the following. 12 steps, each step is a half amma high, which means that when I get to the top step and I'm gonna go into the Heichel, I'm, I'm gonna go into the Ulam and then the Heichel, 12 times a half is six. So that the Ulam and Heichel are six almost higher than the Azorah. Okay, let's see what that means. Go back to diagram three. This area, this structure, this rectangular ulam and the heichel about which we're learning are sitting on a piece of land that is six amos higher than the open area around it. So if you're in the ulam or the heichel, you are six amos higher off the ground than the mezbeach. The mezbeach is in the azora. In order to get into the Ulam, you had to walk up 12 steps, each a half an Amma. You're now six Amos higher in the Ulam and in the Heichel than from this entire open area of the Azor. As you can see in this diagram, the steps are in the middle. This open area and this open area are also lifted up. There are six Amas off the ground. Okay, you cannot build a structure where the middle of the structure is six amas off the ground and the two wings of the structure are on the ground. It's not going to work. So if the middle part of the ulam, which comes from the steps, is six amas higher, then the right wing and the left wing of the building are six amas higher. Well, if, the, uh, if this whole rectangular building, including the wings, is six amos raised from the ground, that means underneath the wings, you can build compartments. You have a basement. And that is what diagram 34 is showing you. 12 steps into the ulam. The heichel is Past the ulam, you walk through the ulam into the heichel. The ulam and the heichel are at the same level, six amas higher than the azorah. To the right and the left of the steps, you have a raised floor. That's the ulam floor. It's been raised as part of the whole ulam structure. Below that, you have a six ama area. The steps raise this area six amos, so you have sort of a basement area that's six amos high from here to here. In fact, if you look at the picture, it's showing you right there six amos. And it is in these six amos that you have the first level of corridors. But how do you get into those corridors? We'll get to that.
you can't get into the corridors by walking in through the front because the front is a solid wall. Behind the solid wall, there are corridors. On top of that solid wall, you have the five corridors we just learned about. We learned about five corridors, three that go all around and two that come to dead ends. Those are the five corridors you're looking at now in 34A. And those same five corridors are below the step level. Five corridors, on top of them five corridors, and on top of them five corridors. And this was done on the west, I'm sorry, this was done on the northern side and the southern side. Five corridors in the basement, five corridors built above, five corridors built above that, each of them is six amos high. The first level, basement level, is six amos high because that's how high the steps raise you. The second level is six amos high with five corridors. The third level is six amos high with five corridors. Now let's so far make a calculation. I have the basement that has five corridors. Level one, five corridors. Level two, five corridors. So I have five times three, 15 corridors on the northern side, 15 corridors on the southern side. And you can see them in the picture. The only thing the picture is not showing you is the corridors in the basement. But the same thing is in the basement. So you have 15, five times three, corridors to the north, five times three to the south. Now, what was going on in the back, in the west? In the west, there are also three level of corridors. Let's go back to this picture. Let's go back to 31. In the west, there are only three corridors because the two on the last two on the north and the last two on the south came to dead ends at the west wall of this is already the wall behind the Kodesh Kadoshim. Here's the Kodesh Kadoshim. These are the walls behind the Kodesh Kadoshim. The two outer corridors on the north and the south did not go around. They're dead ends. There are only three corridors that were in the West. One, two, three. So below in the basement, you have three corridors. Above that, on the first floor, you have three corridors, that's six. And the top floor, they split the area into only two corridors. So it's the same area, but instead of taking the area which was 17 amos. Again, we'll learn about all these things. And splitting into three corridors at the top floor on the western wall behind the Kodesh Kadashim, they took the same space that for the first two floors made three corridors, and on the top level, they made it two corridors. So what do we have now? We have three corridors that go all around the Heichel, and in each one of those corridors, there is... Uh, that goes around and the last two corridors come to dead ends. So the eastern, the, I'm sorry, the northern and southern wall have five corridors. Three go all around, two come to dead ends. But as far as the northern wall and the southern wall are concerned, they have five corridors. And that goes up three flights, basement, flight one, flight two, 15 to the north, 15 to the south. I now have 30 corridors. When I come to the west, I cannot include the two outermost north and two outermost south because they don't go around. They came to dead ends. How many corridors do I have to the west? One, two, three. Basement, one, two, three corridors. On top of that, 
first floor, one, two, three. On top of that, only two. Same width, but split into two instead of three corridors. So let's read the Mishnah quickly, and we'll have our introduction for tomorrow. We'll just get the numbers, and we're going to see the picture Blineda tomorrow. What we've just done is the Rambam. And Blineda tomorrow, we'll take a look at Rashi, who has a completely different picture. Now, I'm not going to cast a shawl and confuse you. We're going to work through this with the Rambam, but it's important to know how Rashi had a completely different picture of what these ta'im were. So let's now take a quick look at page 59, Midos Perek Dalit, Mishnah Gimel. We just said there are 38 corridors using the Rambam. 15 to the north, 15 to the south, and eight in the west. 15 to the north, again, you have five corridors. Three of them go all around, two of them come to dead ends. That's true for the north, that's true for the south. But there are five corridors going from the east to the west, both on the northern side and the southern side. And they go five corridors, basement, floor one, floor two. So on the northern side, you have five times three, 15. On the southern side, you have five times three is 15. Again, just look at that picture, 34A, and you'll see what we're talking about. Floor one, floor two, and one floor beneath. Each of them has five corridors. To the north, to the south, 15 each is 30. On the west, the outer, uh, the inner three corridors went around. The outer two corridors came to dead ends at the western wall behind the Kodesh Kadoshim. And therefore, you can't include them as corridors on the western wall because they didn't go to the western wall. They got cut off at the western wall of the Hegel, and they didn't go around. So we only have three corridors on the western wall of the Azara, of the Hegel, three basement, three first floor, and on the second floor, the area of the three corridors was split into two. So we have 15 north, 15 south, first floor west three, first, second floor west three, top floor west two, 15, 15, 30, three and three to the west is 636, and two top floor to the west is 38, Mishnah Gimel. Ushlosha ushmona ta'im hoyusham. There were 38 corridors, 15, 15, west 15, 15, north and south, west, three, three and two. Mission explains, Hamisha Asar Batsafon, 15 to the north, Hamisha Asar Badarom, 15 to the south, Ushmona Badarom, Bamayrub, and there were eight on the western wall. Shebet Safo, Shebet Darom, on the northern and southern world, walls, Hamisha Al Gabi Hamisha, five on top of five, and another five on top of that. So there are three levels, basement five, level one, five, level two, five. Remember the basement level is the level that was created by the steps of the Ulam. Again, diagram 34, the steps of the Ulam created a wing to the right and a wing to the left of the Ulam steps. And that became sort of a basement. And there, there are five corridors and five corridors north and south, five above that, five above that. And that's what the Mishnah says. Chamisha al gabe, chamisha, five on top of five, a chamisha al gabe, and five on top of them. Vesheba Mayrov, when you go to the west, what happens when you go to the west? If you look at, let's see where, oh, there we go. If you look at diagram 31 again, the three walls that are closest to the Hegel go all around. The two outermost walls come to dead ends. So these two outer walls do not create corridors in the back of the Kodesh Kadoshim, which is west. They just come to dead ends. How many corridors do we have in the back in the Mayrev? One, two, three. Three below level, basement, three at the level of the 
Hecho, and two above that. They're the same width, but the top two, for reasons we'll learn about, they broke into two. And, three, and that's what the Mishnah now describes of Sheba Mayrov, <clears throat> the Western Wall, Shlosha Gabe Shlosha, they were three on top of three, Ushnayim Al Gabeim, and above those two levels of three, there was a level that was the same width, but the corridors were broken into two larger corridors instead of three narrow ones. That's 38 in around the Hecho. Okay, we'll stop here. But today we have a little introduction into understanding the Ta'im that will help us for the rest of Mishnah Gimel and Mishnah Dalit. Um, Mishnah He continues to talk about the Ta'im. Mishnah Vav begins giving us dimensions of everything we've learned about. How big was this room? How big was this room? How big was this room? <clears throat> and we're going to learn in those Mishnayas about the sizes of the base Hamikdash. Ezra Snashim 135 by 135, Azara 187 long, 135 wide. And we're going to learn how much each part inside each structure took up. How big was the Mizbeah? How big was the base Hamikdash? You can see the rectangular building ulam is bigger than the heichel. How wide was the ulam? How wide was the heichel? How long was it? From here to here we know is 187. Of that 187, how much did this structure take up? Those are the things we're going to learn in the last Mishnayis as we proceed to the end of Midas. We're going to get exact dimensions, which when you want to take the dimensions and superimpose them on the Har Habayas from an aerial view, which we took a look at, and Blinette will take a look at it again. We get a better understanding of where the base Hamikdash is on today's Har Habayas. Okay, let's take a look at the Das Tavunos. So, Bar Hashem, we are <clears throat> for this cycle, we're almost finished in terms of construction. And when we finish the construction of these ta'im, and we understand what the two outer walls were, the Masiba and the Beis HaRod at Hamayim, we're then going to start learning about what the measurements are for everything we built. And B'lined Demi Yetz Hashem, Bezrat Hashem, will be able to make a seam and Masech Tamidus next week. And the Rabbana Shalom will do the rest. We can only do what we can do and he will do the rest and build the base on make